I think it all began really when I started working in advertising almost nine years ago now, which which actually feels quite surreal. But that kind of gave me the building blocks of understanding what products are, how to market them. And above all else, I mean, I learned this in radio because uh, I did work in that industry for a while as well, but it's always to know your audience. So the journey of, of everything that I've done is it's beyond being a business, it's human understanding and how to communicate with people and sell them something that they might not even know they need. The interesting thing is that, especially in the last year and a half, there's been uh, an expansion strategy. So The Expressionist is is kind of a, a personal project of mine that's become a business where I started out doing photography and content production as a hobby, you know, video, uh, footage, painting, etc. And I realized that there's a market for this, especially because the black voice in the advertising industry is, is almost non-existent or it's very silent or small. And um, I decided to form something called the Unculture Club with two partners of mine. And from that, we create content for video, uh, social media, TV, radio, writing, etc., photography. And we use that as the component where we produce content. So that's the production house. And it's housed under the expressionist where we also do content strategy. So if a, a company comes and says, you want to sell soft drinks to people from the ages of 18 to 26, we'll go and do the research. We'll go to places other than just Bramfontein and um, Maboneng. We'll mm -hmm. go to Soweto, we'll go to Tembisa and understand the lay of the actual land and not just these niche markets that people think to seem or think to, to feel like it's the buzz place to be. Yeah. And then from there, we, we create the content based on an understanding of people. Again, knowing your audience before you start anything else. I remember reading a quote while I, when I was about 14, 15 from Henry Ford, and he said, if I had asked people what they wanted, they would have asked for a faster horse. So it's, it's preemptive strikes. Uh, and it's something I learned playing chess as a child as well, is that you need to think a few moves ahead of what you're seeing at the moment. So um, when I started blogging about five years ago, things like Tumblr and, and Blogger, which are uh, blogger, blogger templates and websites, were not very popular in the country. Instagram mm -hmm. was still very small in itself. And I saw an opportunity there because whenever I'd search content, working in advertising and we were doing a campaign for um, the black consumer, we couldn't find images, something as simple as images of black people laughing, black people drinking whiskey or black people playing in a park. Mm -hmm. And I realized that there's a lack of content there. And I started the photography as a hobby at first, but it was with that notion in mind. So I think it's always looking at the lay of the land, but thinking strategically um, further than just being a creative person who creates creative content. It's what will people need and where are their gaps in the market? And like I said, even now, the market is quite saturated with black creators, but we still lack opportunities with big business um, where they'll co-opt or take elements of what we're doing, but never actually consult with uh, young black people. Mm. It's kind of, oh, the cool kids in Bramfontein are doing something. Let's just emulate it and put it in its place instead of consulting and having that authenticity. And I think that's why a lot of campaigns tend to struggle because they don't have that voice of somebody who's grown up that way. It will sound strange, but we've actually turned down more offers than um, we've taken because um, if you look at even the lay of advertising at the moment, it's owned by three conglomerates, and that's Omnicom, WPP, and Publicis. And once you, you're you part of that system, sure, you're integrated into a network of businesses worldwide, mm -hmm. and that's the story they sell. But what's important for us is autonomy and having control over what we do rather than having to tow the company line and go through all of these bureaucratic processes to do things. And I've been witness to both sides of it, working at both a small a agency and one of the one of the big ones. Mm. And for us, it's important to have control over the voice. So if somebody approaches the company, they need to trust that we're, we know what we're doing. So you wouldn't go to a dentist and he tells you, oh, Anthony, you've got a cavity, you need a filling. And you're like, no, I think I need, I need a crown. I know better. <laughs> and that's what tends to happen with advertising is we bend to the will of, of brands. So um, the, the nice thing about having various revenue streams is that we can afford to say no mm. if something doesn't feel authentic or if they're not taking our recommendations rather than what happens in advertising where people just, oh, this is 100 million rand. We have to take it and then just compromise the integrity of what you're doing. I think it's the same challenges that, that faced me while, while I was working in advertising and the creative industry and is that 
it's it's an all boys club and beyond that it's an all white boys club so um if you're if you're young and black and you've got a startup it's a lot harder to to get into a door and your work has to kind of bulldoze your way in and that's what's happened with us and the few clients that we have on retainer is that the content of what we do has had to speak so loudly yeah. that they couldn't ignore us anymore and people are saying well these are the guys doing X, Y, and Z. Why aren't we consulting with them or why aren't we working with them? So um, that still remains a challenge, but one that I think we're slowly overcoming by just sure tenacity and dexterity and not giving up. So it's, yeah, it's getting people to give us the opportunities to do the actual work mm -hmm. or even just to pitch for the work, never mind um, getting a signing for it.